What's going on everyone? It's Ozzy from Mozstox Hardware and a couple of days ago, well actually about a month ago now, Steve from Hardware Unbox uploaded an IPC comparison between the Ryzen 2000 series, their latest lineup, and the Intel Coffee Lake series. Now this is a very good in-depth analysis so definitely check it out once you get the chance, but the results were interesting. The mainstream Coffee Lake CPUs were only 3.6% faster than the Ryzen 2000 chips in Cinebench's single-threaded benchmark and much slower in the multi-threaded benchmark. Yet the gaming benchmarks did not reflect that 3.6% difference well. Clock for clock, the Coffee Lake CPUs had a 5-15% to gaming improvement over the Ryzen 2000 chips. Well, why is that? First off, and it's kind of obvious, but optimization. Zen is a completely new architecture from AMD, and even the most recently released and more refined Zen Plus will still have its fair share of growing pains. Intel, on the other hand, has basically used the same architecture and interconnect framework since Nehalem, a micro architecture that debuted about 10 years ago. It's very refined, and developers really know how to optimize their games for Intel CPUs. Zen, on the other hand, will take some adjustment time, but it should only get better from here. Secondly, and also pretty obvious, clock speed. Intel CPUs have a higher base frequency, boost frequency, and overclocking potential overall. This allows them to do more iterations than a respectively clocked AMD processor, and that can play a big difference in games. For example, an i5-8600K performs 10-20% to better overclocked to 5GHz than at stock in 1080p gaming. But the less obvious reason why mainstream Intel CPUs, and mainstream is very important here, I'll dive into that a little bit later, beat the competition in games is because of their low latency on-die interconnect technology. Now that sounds like a mouthful, I know, and a little bit intimidating, but it's really not as difficult as it seems. I'll try to explain it as simply as I can, and I won't get too technical here, so here we go. Both AMD and Intel have their own interconnect technology. AMD uses the Infinity Fabric and Intel uses the Ring Bus for low core chips and the mesh design for some high core designs. Modern AMD processors have core complexes, called CCXs for short, that can store anywhere from one to four CPU cores. If you want a four core CPU, you disable two cores in each of the CCXs. If you want an eight core CPU, you leave all four cores enabled in both CCXs. If you want 16 cores, you add two more CCXs. I think you kind of get my drift. These CCXs communicate with one another through the Infinity Fabric, the high-speed interlink used to exchange all sorts of data, including the aforementioned CPU data between CCXs, graphical processing unit data, I.O. data, and system memory data. Mainstream Intel chips and most high-end desktop Intel chips use the ring bus design, where each of the cores share L3 cache and are connected through four different rings that respectively transfer four different types of 32-bit data per clock. The cores are lined up linearly next to one another meaning that a quad-core chip will have four cores lined up one by one and interconnected through four rings. A six-core chip will have six cores lined up one by one with four different rings and so on and so forth. When transferring data between CPU cores, there's always latency or a delay from when the data is requested by you, the computer user, and it's received by the CPU core and it starts following the instruction. This means that lower latency is good because you want your data to be transferred as quickly as possible. I already explained all the types of data that AMD's Infinity Fabric can exchange, so as you can probably imagine, there's a decent amount of traffic between the two CCXs when they're talking to each other, and this adds latency. Intel CPUs, on the other hand, they don't really have this issue. Psi software Sandra can benchmark intercore latency, and although AMD rivals Intel in quarter core latency, the extra latency caused by the Infinity Fabric creates this gap between AMD and mainstream Intel CPUs in many modern titles. Intel's ring bus is still the latency king. Hardware Unbox also did a video where they simulated a Ryzen quad-core CPU, one with two cores in each CCX and one with four cores in one CCX, effectively disabling the other CCX and getting rid of any kind of inter-CCX communication altogether. Why didn't the latter perform better than the former? Well, it's hard to say for sure, but RAM speed seems to play a part here. It's no news that the Infinity Fabric is directly linked with RAM speed. Higher clocked RAM means faster data transfer through the fabric, meaning lower latency and better performance. It's also why everyone recommends you at least use 2933 MHz RAM when paired with a Ryzen CPU. Steve used RAM clocked at 3200 MHz, which seems to be fast enough where the fabric doesn't pose a noticeable bottleneck between the CCXs anymore. Two other public 
publications, PC Games Hardware, and a French publication both used 2400MHz RAM, and their results both showed that the simulated processor with one of its CCXs disabled performed better than the other. Basically, there is a difference, but only if certain parameters are met. In this case, the RAM is clocked low enough to create the data exchange bottleneck. It's also good to know the difference between AMD and Intel's respective CPU generations. The IPC difference between Ryzen 1 and Ryzen 2 is only 3% at best, yet Ryzen 2 processors have a noticeable lead over their older brother. Again, this goes back to latency. AMD improved cache and memory latency by up to 34% in some instances with their latest Ryzen 2000 processors. It's also why the i7-8700K remains the gaming king, even over its high-end desktop brothers, when less than 8 cores and threads are utilized anyway. The 8-core i7-7820X has almost doubled the inner core latency than the 8700K, and that shows itself in a lot of the games clock for clock. Same thing can be said about the 6-core i7-7800X, and this is why I specifically mentioned mainstream Intel CPUs earlier, specifically those that utilize Intel's ring bus design. The Skylake X and Kaby Lake X CPUs use both a redesigned cache system and a redesigned interconnect technology that is derived from the ring bus called the mesh design in order to save die space and to improve latency on higher core count CPUs, especially their server and workstation CPUs. I won't dive into the technicalities behind these changes, but the combination of these two things actually helps out with their high core count CPUs, let's say beyond 10 or 12 cores, but it doesn't scale that well with their lower core count CPUs, their 6 to 8 core high-end desktop i7s, and actually adds latency. To recap, IPC really isn't everything, and now that the CPU world is competitive again, all these other factors are really going to play a part in order to see who really has the performance crown in gaming. Intel's lower latency, their higher IPC, and their higher CPU frequencies is more than enough to give them the edge in gaming over the competition, but that could possibly change now that we're seeing that they're having issues with their 10 nanometer node shrinks while AMD is already on 7 nanometer and testing those. So next year we might see a flip in the performance crown, who knows. I'll end with my favorite question, AMD or Intel, which do you recommend, which do you personally prefer, and which do you think will have the gaming crown or overall performance crown even next year? Let me know in the comments below. Besides that, Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. If you have any tips for me to improve my video quality, just let me know in the comments below. If you really love this video, then share it, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.